What is good, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Bible with the Daily Dabber. Last time, Bible chapters D, we look at chapter 2 of Judges, the angel, the Lord, and Vulcan. But today, we'll be looking at chapter 3 of Judges. These are the nations that the law left to test all those Israelites who had not experienced any of the wars in Canaan. He did this only to teach warfare to the descendants of the Israelites who had not previously had better experience. The five rulers of the Philistines are the Canaanites, the Sidonians, the Hivites living in the Leb Lebanon mountains. I thought it was the LeBron James mountains a second. Lebanon mountains from Mount Baal to Lebo Hamath. They were left to test Israelites to see whether they could obey the law's commands, which he had given their ancestors through Moses. The, Isra the, the, the Israelites lived among the Canaanites, Hittites, Hamarites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. They took their daughters in marriage and gave their own daughters to their sons and served their gods. Othniel, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. They forgot the Lord their God and served the Baals and the Asherahs. The anger of the Lord burned against Israel, so that he sold them into the hands of the Kushan, Rishitipatan, king of Aram Naharaim, to whom the Israelites were subject for eight years. But when they cried out to the Lord, he raised them up for them a deliverer, Othniel, son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, who saved them. The Spirit of the Lord came on him, so that he became Israel's judge and went to war. The Lord gave Pushan Ritham and the Thame, king of Aram, into the hands of Othniel, who overpowered him. So the land had peace for forty years until Othniel, son of Kenaz, died. Ehud. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And because they did this evil, the Lord gave Eglon, king of Moab, power over Israel. Getting the Amorites and Amalekites to join him, Eglon came and attacked Israel, and they took possession of the city of the Palms. The Israelites were subject to Eglon, king of Moab, for 18 years. Again, the Israelites cried out to the Lord, and he gave them a deliverer, Ehud, a left-handed man, the son of Gera, the Benjaminite. The Israelites sent him with a tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. Now Ehud had made a double-edged sword about a cubit long, which he strapped to his right thigh under his clothing. He presented the tribute to Eglon, king of Moab, who was a very fat man. After Ehud had presented the tribute, he sent on their way those who had carried it. But on reaching the stone images near Gilgal, he himself went back to Eglon and said, Your Majesty, I have a secret message for you. The king said to his attendants, Leave us! And they left. Ehud then approached him while he was sitting alone in the upper room on his path and said, I have a message from God for you. As the king rose from his seat, Ehud reached with his left hand, drew the sword from his right thigh, and plunged it into the king's fat belly. <laughs> even the handles sank in, bro. Even the handles sank in after the blade and, and his bowels discharged. Ehud did not pull the sword out, and the fat closed in over it. <laughs> bro, why you gotta do my day like that, bro? <laughs> then Ehud went out to the porch. He shut the doors of the upper room behind him and locked them. After he had gone, the servants came in and found the doors of the upper room locked. They said. He must be relieving himself in the inner room of the palace. They waited to the point of embarrassment. When he did not open the doors of the room, they took a key and unlocked them. There they saw that their lord fallen on the floor, dead. While they waited, Ehud got away. He passed by the stone images and escaped to Syria. When he, when he arrived there, he blew a trumpet in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites went down with him from the hills, with him leading them. Follow me, he ordered, for the Lord has given Moab your enemy into your hands. So they followed him down and took possession of the falls of the Jordan that left Moab. They allowed no one to cross over. At that time, they struck down about 10,000 Moabites, all vigorously strong, and no one escaped. That day, Moab was made subject to Israel, and the land had peace for 80 years. Shamgar. After Ehud came, Shamgar, son of Anath, who struck down 600 Philistines with an ox gold, he too saved Israel. Well, guys, thank you all for listening. It's been a pleasure. I am the Daily Dabber, and this is 